Joining me now is a former member of the Trump administration, former National Security Advisor, Ambassador John Bolton. Ambassador, thank you so much for joining me here this afternoon. I, I want to start with this. I mean, you have dealt with dictators. I mean, in your role as a, a national security high-level official over the years, do you see similarities in some of the t tactics that Trump is taking to what you've seen from authoritarian dictators? Well, certainly what he has tried to do in the past and what he's saying he's going to do in the future go well beyond any uh, conceivable conduct by prior American presidents, no matter how much they were considered. Uh, Nixon, Richard Nixon looks like a choir boy next to Donald Trump. Uh, so I think it's, uh, it's him saying these things publicly. Ironically, I have to say I hope will be hopeful, be helpful, because I think people should wake up to the reality uh, and although the polls don't look uh, particularly good on the Republican side, to continue to make efforts to deny him the nomination. I know you're very hopeful about that, and I want to dig into this. I do think that, that these tactics he's using, or what we're seeing him project that he wants to do in a second term, are important because, and you have dealt with, again, dictators around the world. It's not typically, though, a sign of strength, is it? It's a sign that they're weak because they're trying to hold on to power. Well, it's in part, it's a sign he doesn't have the slightest idea what he's doing. I mean, most presidents we think of have policy agendas. Trump does not have a policy agenda. He doesn't have a philosophy other than the greater glorification of Donald Trump. So I think it's completely accurate and, and, and quite consistent for Trump to say he wants retribution against his adversaries. And he will try and use the Justice Department. He may try and use the Defense Department. Uh, and we saw evidence of it in the first term. I, I don't know whether I'm happy to say, but I was certainly a target for the publication of my book. Mm. He, he said in more times than I can count that he wanted John Kerry prosecuted for violating the Logan Act, which, by the way, he was never able to do. The real, the real question in the second term is how much of that he will uh, go beyond uh, pontificating about and actually try. I think the level uh, of, that he will try is much higher than in the first term, and I think that should be a warning to everybody. And, you know, you've said, which I think is interesting, a, a constitutional crisis. We could be facing a constitutional crisis on a daily basis, and I'm quoting from you. But what, how do if world leaders around the world, other countries, I mean, if, if he proceeds with what he's saying he's going to do, with what you just outlined, how do they view that? How do they view the United States? Well, I think it's going to cause uh, tremendous damage to the United States internationally, not, not to mention the damage it will cause domestically. And I, I said uh, in 2020 that what he, the damage he did in his first term was not insignificant, but it was all repairable. Mm. The damage he could do in a second term, and I say that again, even though the terms are disconnected, may be irreparable. And, and, and that, I think, is what's dangerous. Now, I have to say, on the other hand, I don't think people should be apocalyptic about mm -hmm. this. Uh, the framers of the Constitution didn't write the document just for sunny days. It has the elements of structural constitutionalism make it difficult for Trump to do a lot of what he wants. It doesn't happen automatically. Every citizen's got to be a part of it. But I think if you, if you fall into a doom and gloom perspective that it, it's over, if he's elected, it's just over, uh, you're, hel you're helping to give him what he wants. I know you've said that before. You don't want to be alarmist. And, and I think sometimes people, that is, that is a natural place for people to go. And people, there are things to be alarmed about. I do, because you've spent so much time in government, I do want to ask you about some of the specific pieces, because I think that's important for people to understand. Like, for example, he has said he could attempt to use his authority. I mean, he said he could use it, the military to, to stay in power. That's one of the things that uh, Representative Cheney has touted, that others have, have spoken about. Are you concerned about that, that he, that he could use the military to try to stay in power? Sure. I think he will try and do that. There, there is one difference, though, in a second Trump term, which is the Constitution is utterly unambiguous. He doesn't get a third term. So, so efforts to stay in power beyond that are, in a way, different from what we saw in 2020, <clears throat> where a second term would have been le legitimate if he had actually won. I think, though, that the attempt to order the military to do things that are illegal uh, or unconstitutional is, is how this constitutional crisis on a daily basis gets started. Because uh, I think uh, most military leaders take their oath to the Constitution seriously. And if they're asked to do something or ordered to do something uh, they think is illegal, uh, that's where we're going to see the crisis. They either refuse the order and get fired or they resign. Uh, and that, that's how it will develop. And that's, that's where a lot of this, it's, it's not, when Trump has an idea, it's not self-executing. Well, that is assuming, though, and you've sat in the Situation Room in many circumstances. I'm sure there have been many moments. I know there have been many moments where you've stood up and disagreed. 
Trump has kind of conveyed, and his team has, that he's going to surround himself with enablers. So what happens if he's in the Situation Room and everybody is a yes man and a yes woman? What is the danger of that? Well, I think that's very serious. But let's just take his political appointees for a second. Number one, uh, part depends on who controls the Senate. But I'm not sure a, a lot of them, maybe even any of them, in key departments are going to get confirmed by the Senate very easily. So he'd be dealing with a series of acting people. Uh, and even some of the people he uh, nominates or thinks are loyal to him who go through this uh, test that they're giving potential job applicants may come to a point where they say no. But even if all the political people say yes, they've still got to turn in the military, at the Justice Department, to career people to actually do it. And I think in justice, you'll see the same kinds of resignations. Uh, it could result in, really, in very widespread resignations. This would, in part, bring the government to a halt. And that's, that's why this constitutional crisis, I think, is something that, uh, that it is, it is going to prevent Trump from acting as quickly uh, as he thinks he's going to be able to. What about, you spent some time in the Justice Department. What about pardon power? and his use of pardon power. Is that an area that concerns you? There aren't. I mean, there are historic precedents, but there is not a system that is preventing a president from pardoning who he wants. No, the, the, the pardon power, uh, it doesn't have uh, checks in, in the Constitution itself. There's a very elaborate process uh, in the department to grant pardons. Trump essentially ignored it. Uh, but there were a lot of pardons at the end of the Clinton administration, too, that were that were dubious, to say the least. It's it's uh, it's something that he could do, and I'm sure he will do, and I'm sure he will abuse it. Well, there are certainly many some in the end of the Clinton administration. Democrats, uh, people have been critical of. But I think what Trump is saying here is he's going to go after his enemies and pardon people who help him, which feels like a whole different level of concern. Right. No, I think I think we should be concerned about it. Uh, but a lot of the people who uh, went into the Capitol grounds on January the 6th. They're going to be uh, in jail still when when he might be taking office and, and they're being pardoned uh, could have an effect. I hope those people have been chastened sufficiently in prison uh, that, that they don't come back and go back to what they were doing on January the 6th. But that's part of the struggle this is going to be. No, nobody, I don't think anybody should have any illusions this is going to be easy. I'm, I'm, I, what we want is not to overstate the threat certainly not to understate the threat. We want to assess the threat accurately so that our responses uh, deal with it effectively. Ambassador Bolton, thank you so much for joining me with your Christmas tie on today. I appreciate Glad to be here. being here with me this afternoon.